Oh, I'm so excited to talk ready with you. Ready in 5, 4, 3, 2... Yeah! Hey! Yeah! Yeah! Hey. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at podcast! <laughs> with Christina P. Come see me do stand up. Hey, can you um bring my shittle tater? I just, uh, I didn't just announce by the time this airs. I'm going to be doing the Netflix is a joke festival. I believe sometime in May I'm doing it. It's such a cool venue. It's at a cemetery. Isn't that fucking dope? Anyway, get your tickets for that. And then Vancouver, BC at the, at the Vogue. And then Seattle, I've added an early show at the Neptune Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco. And then I added an early show at the Gramercy Theater in New York City and then Ridgemont. Come Netacunt. Get your tickets at Christina P. Online. Now with me, you guys, you're not even fucking ready for what you're about to experience. Um, Listen, as you know, over the summer, your mom got into UFOs. I'm sorry, UAPs, a little heavy. And the reason is because of this gentleman sitting right here, everybody, Lester Nair is in the house, a.k.a. Elroy Spacely on TikTok, Look him up, okay? And I'll listen, I know you're not a UAP person. Great. You're gonna be after you hear what this guy has to say. He's smart. He went to fucking Princeton, bro. He codes. He's a computer guy. And he can understand what these congressmen are saying, more, most importantly. Thank you for being here, Elroy Spacely. Where my mom's at. <laughs> Where my mom's at. <laughs> I'm so starstruck because I'm obsessed with your videos. You can understand. So, So first of all, what the fuck is happening that Congress is discussing aliens? What is happening? It's it's really bizarre, and it's bizarre that I'm even here talking to you about this. But you know, right now we have the Senate and the House basically arguing over a massive UFO bill, and it's even funny to say like, "Oh, there's a, a UFO bill." And basically, the the bill outlines a plan, a controlled disclosure plan, right? And it creates a a board called the ERB, the UAP Records Review Board, nine people. Let's First of all, back up. For anybody, what is a UAP? Why UAP and not UFO? Just start that basic shit you know, for normal people listening who totally aren't wearing tinfoil hats. <laughs> so, you know, like me. Obviously, the word UFO has a lot of like stigma and like Hollywood cinematic reference points in people's minds. And folks within the government like saw this as a real issue but wanted to be able to talk about it without having doors slammed in their face. So they began to use the terminology unidentified aerial phenomena first, um, and then they changed it to unidentified anomalous phenomena in the last three years. Oh. And the reason they did that was because they're not only seeing stuff in space and in the sky, but also in the water that have these weird characteristics. Because they live in the water. We all fucking know that. So they're not technically flying. Yeah. And they're not only technically aerial, so that's why they've sort of come up with and it's UAP. A, it's a UFO rebrand. <laughs> exactly. Because now we're in a new era. Exactly. Okay, so let's go back to this Chuck Schumer bill that you're is being presented in Congress, y'all. This isn't this isn't some wackadoo, you know, thing in the in the desert that numbnuts are putting together. This is Congress. Okay, so Chuck Schumer, so, Amy, Amy Schumer's Amy, uncle, right? Uncle, Related right. to a comic. Go ahead. And it's it's funny because it's 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 actually a very bipartisan movement that's happened within Congress. And this has been going on. There's a process that's been happening since 2008. And we don't have to necessarily go all the way back there. But, you know, basically six senators, three Democrats and three Republicans put this bill together in the summer uh, around of the time 08. of no, no, of this, this summer, this summer yeah. around the time that David Grush did his July testimony. 26. <laughs> I know I, I watched it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking watched it. I man, it was in Congress. So David Gresh is a whistleblower. Yes, and he came forward and he's like, "Look, there is what there's UAPs. There's things in the sky we don't know. And not only that, there are funds being diverted to secret government programs, right? To back engineer and yes. do all this shit. Exactly, exactly. And that's that's you know we've kind of heard rumors like that for a while. But the reason this was different with Grush was he both testified under oath so like you know yeah. he could go to prison da, 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 da. and he also went to the inspector general like the cops for the government people and they were like yeah this is like credible and urgent so the senators have been talking with grush behind the scenes as well as other whistleblowers i think this is the thing that a lot of people don't know about there's like dozens and dozens of these government 
whistleblowers that have been going to Marco Rubio and Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand, who are all senators, and saying like, there is a program where we are reverse engineering craft of non-human origin. And obviously the senators are like, uh, okay, what are we, what are we going to do with that? So that's where this whole Schumer rounds amendment or the UAP disclosure act of 2023 came about because for the last several years, so many of these people have come forward that they're like, okay, we have to like create a process to try to like adjudicate this issue. God, you're so smart. Like when you talk, like, <laughs> but, like I listen to you on TikTok and I have to like slow it down because I'm like, dude, he went to Princeton. Like, I'm so shocked smart. people even listen because it's, I kind of am a little <laughs> dusty and boring, right? But I love it. But, I, I, but you know what? You give it so much credibility because you use the big words. This is Lakshmi Singh with NPR. <laughs> You are the Lakshmi Singh of the UAP world. Okay, so so back that ass up. So Chuck Schumer and these other nerds in Congress are yes. like, we want a disclosure bill. Yes. So this means, where is this? What are these programs? What are UAPs? Yes. What are we seeing in the sky? Yes. And not only that, is this that, that I saw the video you had about a document that had been leaked during... So the, yeah, yeah, th 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 from the Seoul conference, which was basically like the timeline of this theoretical controlled disclosure plan. We should we should come back to that. Theoretical. Hold on, say it again. They always have these dumb names and, and confusing acronyms for very. Basically, we're going to tell the public aliens yes. exist. Yes. So this was a conference that took place where it was at. It was at Stanford. It was hosted by Dr. Gary Nolan, who is yes. Nobel nominee has written 300 published papers, like, you know, several patents, started multiple companies that sold for million. like a very successful general science, like he's professor of pathology at Stanford. He basically brought in all of these former government people, journalists and you know, scientists and academics. And they're basically having the like, Hey guys, this is happening conversation. <laughs> and like, how do we prepare people in our spaces, in our verticals to like address the issue? So they're trying to sort of like, prepare the battlefield right for this society rollout. you right. mean because right. what the document right. that had leaked you, there's a video go to elroy spacely please on tiktok there it's literally a timeline yes. of how the government will disclose to the public yes. that it's like 20 by 2027 yes. announce like basically like what is the president gonna come out and be like hey guys turns out so this is i mean this is what we're seeing happen right now is like an authentic, organic, constitutional struggle between the legislative branch, Congress, the people who like run the money and make the, the rules, and the executive branch, right? All the three-letter agencies, the office of the president, the military. Congress is basically like, yo, where's the stuff? And then the executive branch is like, what stuff? We don't have the stuff. Mm -hmm. And basically the executive branch behind the scenes is like, shoot, we lost the stuff because they, <laughs> they gave it to the contractors, all these aerospace companies and the aerospace companies are kind of like, ah, it's ours now. Like you gave it to us. Right, Meaning they, they did deals with these private companies. Yes. Like, Hey, can you reverse engineer yes. back in Roswell? This thing crashed. Yes. We want to know how to make a zero gravity, blah, blah, blah. So like Boeing or whoever that's back the, engineers. That's, that's things. the allegation. And I want to be clear, like, I, I don't have, um, I never worked for the government. I don't have a security That's clearance. That's why I trust you. I'm not an op. I don't have the answers. I just find this interesting. And I always come at this from like, what is, why are people in power who are closer to the issue? Everyone who's looked at it deeply enough in Congress or in these agencies, the, the, their answer is like, oh, I'm more interested. And there's definitely something here as opposed to, oh, this is all hot air. Like the people closest to the issue right. are not saying this is hot air. So why is that? Right. That's what's interesting. And that's what lends credibility now right. to the whole UFO wackadoo discussion. I'm a, I'm a person of reason. I studied philosophy in college. Everybody knows that I say it a million times. And I do believe in reason and logic. And I do believe now we are in a place of reason and logic when it comes to UAPs. Mark my fucking words. You heard it here first. 2027 disclosure. All right. Let's talk about the timeline. Yes. Right? So, so, so the, the, this is crazy. This got leaked in this Stanford meeting. So the, the, the interesting thing is the reason that the soul conference was happening was because, you know, this bill that's again, currently like still mid negotiation, Republicans are trying to kill it. A, a, a small set of Republicans are trying to kill it. And if the bill passed in its full form, this nine person, basically Supreme court of disclosure was going to have to be nominated by Biden starting in March of 2024. So the way that this was, going to roll out if the bill passed as is would be this nine person board gets nominated by Biden in March. 
They have to be Senate confirmed, right? So this is, again, a lot of infrastructure. And then within 180 days, 24 plus federal agencies, including the CIA, the D Department of Defense, like all these groups, we're going to have to start submitting records. And what do I mean by like records? Like, what does that mean? It means any email, any text message, any video evidence, any photo, like anything that's a, like that's tangible would need to be sent to the National Archives, which is our big library where we have all this government stuff stored and the, there are nerds in there who make sure everything stays organized and pristine. And then oh, as that would start rolling out, you know, the idea here is like there's going to be now like revelations about the fact that the federal government has been actively involved in at least the study of this issue mm -hmm. for a very long time. And then possibly, again, some of the more salacious allegations of the right. crafts Which and I the bodies. Which I don't even care. And I'm like, great, back engineer it. No shit, we have fiber optics. Gee, I wonder how that <laughs> happened. Uh, there's so many, I don't care. I love my iPad. Government, I don't care. I'm glad you did it. Just, just let's get into it. Let's get on with it. Full forgiveness I, I, is what I think most people are like, okay, so, so, right? And, Who cares? And this is, I mean, this is very controversial. So I think this is like, so this timeline. This is the fucking timeline leaked from this meeting. And what's great about this is, so the one of the people who was a co-author of the UAP Disclosure Act, this bill that's being negotiated over, his name is Carl Nell. He was a former army colonel and like basically did a whole bunch of work, you know, Revital, like future proofing the army operations, and then also was the chief technical officer at Northrop, Northrop Grumman for like 10 years. Again, mm -hmm. one of these, mm -hmm. exactly, one of these we defense contractors. So he put this presentation together talking about the title of the presentation was like, you know, disclosure of the Schumer Amendment and like where we're going. And I think what's one of the challenges here is like there's no framework for us to understand this. Like we have no, it's basically been like deleted from every aspect of human life as a viable topic of discussion. Well, not only that, not only deleted, it's also been propagandized. Yes. So that if you, you've been trained, by the way, to call these people nuts. Oh, you're crazy. You aliens. Listen, the, the probability dictates, duh, there's aliens. Right. It's like, of course there's other life in the universe. The only challenge is, do, can they get here? Like, that's really the main, like, given the scale of the universe, like, the, yeah. the main, like, thing of that people they say they're, is, they're well above us so that's so the, and they're benevolent and otherwise the, they could have murdered us long ago this is this is a very controversial thing amongst the ufo community oh online my, i know <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like oh well we don't try. what happens when things change if they know that we know are they going to start i don't i'm fascinated by this <laughs> yes stuff. okay so go on to that Sorry, i'm, I'm fascinated so this. so this is so yes. basically there's there's an outline of like over the course of between like now and the 2030s like how do they create the infrastructure for people to accept the reality that there is a non-human intelligence presence on planet Earth? So it breaks it down by like different state phases and then each like area. So like you have, you know, the government, you have academia, you have the private sector and like what the strategic goals are at each stage. So, you know, and this was a recreation. Someone took a picture at this conference they're going to allegedly release that's not true they're going to release all of the presentations online in short order so this will th this this will be confirmed later because right. one right. person i mean i would go well who didn't maybe they doctored this this is fake but you're saying this will be corroborated and, and yeah so i t i actually created this recreation from the picture that someone took that leaked out from you the, did this so I, I created i recreated this chart here yes and you're a tech guy so, you know, the design work I do every day kind of helped in that context. But again, I think this is, again, this is fascinating because people are spending a lot of time, effort, and energy trying to create a workflow that is going to, like, integrate this idea into society across various areas over, like, a long period of time. Again, because if the government, if Biden comes out tomorrow and is like, oh, aliens are real, half the country is going to be like, ah, it's a distraction because of the Israel yeah. Hamas thing or like that. So like, there's all this like knee jerk reaction that sort of removes the ability to just kind of like drop this on everybody and like roll out the crafts because everyone's going to say it's a psyop, it's a false flag, it's a this and that. And I totally understand like that perspective. Well, that's what they said over the summer when there was July 26th and then I forget whatever it was. I think the, the releasing the leaked videos of the UAPs during the pandemic, people were like, who cares? Right. Nothing burger. Right, right. Like, okay. 
I I honestly don't even know. and look I get it I think I think people <laughs> oh, the yeah. government chose the worst time when there's the least amount of trust in government to like yes. start coming out with this stuff. Don't you take that chart down. Hold on. I want I want <laughs> I want Lester to give me give us an overview. This is by the way the language is hilarious and I'm not sure I understand it. So if we could go through this is the proposed government timeline of how they're going to tell us about the aliens. Right. So, you know, the f phase one, right, they want to demonstrate existence, right? So the okay. idea is like, okay, yeah, like these are real physical objects, right? Actually, let me take a step back. Right before that, there's that um, shaping stage, which is mm -hmm. to the left. What's in there are the labels of all of these, you know, uh, task forces and programs between 2008, when I said sort of the modern era started and now, that have gotten us to the place we are today, where mm -hmm. we have these three videos that came out in the New York Times, we're seeing David Grush, we've had some hearings. So like, that's like the pre-era. Then we move, so now it's like the idea is like we're demonstrating existence is like where we're at now. And the point there is. Why'd you take it off? <laughs> but, but while they're recovering that, just so you guys know, during the pandemic, there were three videos leaked that you can go to Wikipedia right now. There's the Go Fast and what's the other? I There's the Go name. Fast, Gimbal, and um, uh, Fire, the third one. Uh, the third one's escaping me. There's too much information in this space. I it's know. unbelievable. But you can actually, I mean, there. It, it was, quote, leaked and the New York Times did an article about it. The New York Times. Okay, this is not some weird publication, again, in Roswell. This is like legitimate news sources. And I think the interesting thing about those videos was there was a there was a chain of custody. I think that's the issue with a lot of this UFO stuff is like what's the chain of custody? Where did it come from? Right? right? And like how can we know that the the source is legit? I think what's interesting about the those three videos is the DOD 2 years later, Department of Defense, sorry, um came out the military people came out and were like, "Yeah, this is Thank you. <laughs> I spend so much time talking like in these like really like yeah. well-informed UFO spaces online yeah. where you can kind of like skip all these steps and I have to remember like no. not everybody. All the accurate, I mean, I'm barely, <laughs> I just learned what a skiff was this summer. So I'm, I'm fucking really new. Okay. This podcast is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed big time. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it way too easy to create an awesome website. Squarespace is perfect for engaging with your audience and selling anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Squarespace is super easy to use. You can set up one of their professional website templates. It's customizable and easy to update. You can use Squarespace to sell your own merch. Design your products and production inventory and shipping are handled for you. And if you want to sell your products in person, you can do so by connecting a Square Reader to the Squarespace app and keeping your orders, inventory, and customer data in sync with your online store. Squarespace is a great product for business owners. Go check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash WMMA to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hi, mommies. I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook, who will be gearing up for the big game with a huge offer. Right now, each and every new customer will get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly when they place their first five dollar wager on anything get in on this action by downloading the DraftKings app and don't forget to use my promo code wmma wondering what you can use your 200 bucks in bonus bets on combine multiple bets together from the same game for a shot at an even bigger payout if sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my promo code WMMA and bet just $5 on any wager and get 200 bucks in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code WMMA only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. <laughs> okay, so so the DOD and all these, yeah, so they're actually taken from naval ships, right? From from government ships. That these are not. This isn't some hillbilly in North Carolina it's not in an his iPhone. backyard. It's, yeah, and this that's is real. That's actually one of the challenges for getting more evidence right now because um, a lot of these platforms on these, you know, fighter jets or on the ships, you know, they're classified platforms. And the, the argument, which I think is a little specious, but the argument is, 
hey, you know, this is sources and methods. We can't let the Chinese and the Russians know mm. what our capable, how good our cameras are, what they sure. are capable of, which is reasonable. I totally get that. Yeah. So, but the difference is they're releasing videos of Russian jets over Ukraine that mm. are on these same secret oh. camera systems because <laughs> right. it's convenient for the political narrative of the day. Sure. But like, okay, you guys are saying these are all balloons and air trash. How come you can't well, show and, us and that? Also, <laughs> and also in some UFO communities, um, uh, from what I understand, the aliens gave all of us technology. There's a theory out there that Roswell wasn't the only crash and that the Russians and the Chinese have the same shit we do, theoretically. I don't know. The same, the same gentleman that did this presentation at the Seoul Conference, Carl Nell, um, was David Grush's boss for some period of time uh, when they were on that task force looking at this issue. And he, he, when David Grush first came out public as the UFO whistleblower, it was in an article in the debrief. And in that article, Carl Nell is quoted as saying exactly what you're talking about, which is that there's been this sub Rosa cold war under the surface cold war between us and the other two superpowers, Russia and China yes, yes. over who could reverse engineer this stuff faster. Right. Because it's, it's really, when you talk about the technical capabilities, like what are we actually talking about? Like when we say you like what, like, what does it look like? What are the performance characteristics? The generally the shapes that are most commonly seen are orbs, Mm -hmm. um, equilateral triangles, triangles with the same length on each side, but rounded corners and the classic lenticular disc shape and then tic tacs like flying butane tanks, oh, right? Yes. Those are like the most common morphologies. Um, and part of what's crazy about it is like some, some of those are not super aerodynamic to begin with. So it's like, how, how are yeah. you, how are they even anti-gravity man? Right. How are they flying? And <sighs> some of the capabilities are anti-gravity or positive lift instantaneous acceleration. So like, you know, like when you're in a car and you want to go forward it takes you time to go from zero to 60 mm -hmm. but these things are going from zero to like mach 10 right instantaneously with no interaction with the earth's no atmosphere fumes. you no don't fume. see the, nothing. the stream of there's nothing fuel there's, they're not fuel propelled is what they're saying most most sort of com most of our aerospace platforms use like combustion right so you see heat get being given off by the engines mm -hmm. when it's working the weird thing about when you look at these videos and a lot of people are like, ah, oh, this doesn't look like anything. The part of the weird thing is the technical aspect of these things are flying mm -hmm. and they're, they're apparently not expelling any heat. Right. So like, where's the energy coming? Like, how is that working? Mm -hmm. That's, that's like super curious and is one of the signals of like, okay, like this is actually pretty, pretty weird because that would be fundamentally, it would be fundamentally different than our current understanding of physics, mm -hmm. at least in the public domain. Unless the Russians back manufactured the shit when it landed in so that's and, and forever in the so 1960s. People are like, oh, like, like maybe it's just Russian drones or it's Chinese yeah. drones and this and that. And like, I think that's fair. Like some of this stuff is for sure, you know, foreign intelligence collection platforms, like for sure. But we're talking about that 1% of weird stuff. Right. Like, like it's right. okay. Like there's, we know that there's that stuff, but what about this 1% of the super weird stuff? And not only that, during the um, congressional hearing, David Grush was discussing about interdimensional being. I'm, I'm talking like AOC and him were going back and forth about fucking like fifth dimension beings. Like they could, which he, which I, from one, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, yeah. Princeton, but literally <laughs> the idea that there's a dimension we don't perceive because we have like, you know, these meat vessel eyes, these dog eyes. Yep. Right now, there could be aliens coexisting in the fifth dimension. So the, the two most popular, from the, from the insiders wild. that have come forward, like yeah. the two most popular theories of like, what is this stuff is the extraterrestrial hypothesis, which we're all familiar with, or this other one, like the interdimensional or like crypto terrestrial like I'm sorry, crypto well, sorry let me say ultra terrestrial like there's like they they've been they, on earth this whole time yeah yeah that's they're just fucking sure they've just been here and they're not really from out there but they're just way more advanced than us right um the interdimensional hypothesis is fascinating like the idea is to, if you think about like a 2d surface like a piece of paper imagine mm -hmm. there's like you know cartoons on the 2d surface and then you put like a glass a 3d glass on that 2d surface right? And it casts a shadow mm. on that. So what they're basically saying is like, what they could be is like, you have a fifth dimensional super intelligent being. And we're kind of, the, what UFOs are, are the shadow that's being cast mm. on our three, four dimensional like experience in the same way that a shadow that's cast on a 2D surface would look bizarre and weird to 2D people 
uh, because they can't see the third dimension. Yo, you, you know what I mean? Like you're already talking like crazy Elroy Spacely. I, I, my, my stupid brain, I'm trying. I'm really trying because like, I'm trying to understand like quantum physics and, and I'm reading about this stuff and I'm like, I just, my, my pea brain is used to atomic, the atomic model of things. And we're literally now in this air, this stage of uh, fucking, what is this? Quantum physics. They're actually changing the way of being. Our, our scientific methods now are being altered by quantum physics. It's and it, really it does lend itself to this fifth dimensional talk. So it does seem all roads, roads, roads point to like this new way of being in the world. And it's converging. Yes. And disclosure. So wait, explain to me. So yes, let's go yes, back yes, because yes, yes, guys, yes. hey, you heard it here first. So the laying the groundwork, which is basically what happened with the leaks of the videos during the pandy. Right. And then, so now they're going to demonstrate existence, which is like, okay, we're going to start having scientific studies and like private sector studies that are like showing that these are real objects. They have these characteristics. We can consistently like see them, monitor them. So, so phase two moves into like, when they say correlating signatures, it's like, okay, like, yeah, what does that mean? So it's like, okay, it's like, how do we, like, one of the things that the Neil deGrasse Tysons of the world or like the famous like science communicators talk about when they are constantly asked about this issue on podcasts is yeah. like, they're just like, oh, well, it's not repeatable, right? Like, mm -hmm. these are fly by night things that happen randomly. There's no way we can set up an experimental situation where we can repeat and then like actually track it. So when they say correlate signatures, it's like, oh, we know that if we look at, you know, the visible light spectrum, at nighttime and like send out these particular like frequencies, like we can trigger the appearance of this stuff. Yeah, that's what they say about the orbs. Right, There's right. a guy that knows how to bring them out in South Carolina. <laughs> this is still so, I, 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 I like it. still am so, I, this is so bizarre that I'm talking about this right now. Um, yeah. So, okay, okay. so that's, okay. that's correlating signatures. And then they're, they're gonna move to like characterizing the performance. Okay, so it's like, what are the, like the bookends? Like how fast can this stuff go? How slow can this stuff go? Can it go through water? Can it go through air? Can it go through space? Can it do all of them at the same time? Um, and then finally, like as we get to what they're sort of calling that, that phase three to phase four is effectively disclosure where it's now it's like, yes, we know what they are. We know how to detect them. We know what their capabilities are. And then you can start getting into the questions of like, who are they? Why are they here? You know, what's, how can we communicate? Like all these kind of like questions about what it, like the, the intelligence behind the nuts and bolts. Yeah. And this is really how the, the space breaks down. It's like you have the nuts and bolts crowd who really just want to focus on there's technology and there's crafts and it's physical. And then you have sort of the consciousness or the woo crowd who come at this and it's like, oh, like if you take DMT, like you can talk to these beings, it's the same beings. There's or like, people that definitely believe that. You can pay a guy and he'll take you out in the desert. Or, you know, the fact that the, the way you control the craft is by using your consciousness to move yes. through time and space. And so there's like a whole spectrum of entry points for people. And I think it's, it's so bizarre yeah. and so different than like our material, like way of thinking about the world that's kind of why they're trying to create this like, um, like you have to create these like bread, like these like anchors yes. for people to hold on to. Yes. It's like, oh, here's a study program from Harvard that's a legitimate scientific institution. And like, so there's that. And then it's like, oh, and then like these aerospace companies are like able to like replicate some of this stuff and we can see it. So there, there needs, because the allegation is that this has all been happening in the black world in yeah. these covert programs for decades, but none of the fundamental information has made its way into the public domain. So again, they're like way over here yes. in the process yes. and we're way over here. And how do we basically bridge that delta and that gap? And, it, and this is, okay, so let's walk through. <laughs> That's fucking, it, it, and, it makes, and it makes sense when you say it that way. You're like, well, yeah, they've had these black ops, they're called, right, black ops operations programs where they've been back engineering stuff that fell to earth since Russell Alleg trying fire. to whether they've been successful or not is because I, yeah. I I'm almost of the opinion that it's a better strategic thing to say oh yeah we figured it out we got, we got some stuff when you yeah. have no friggin idea what the hell's going on wait what's the famous what's his name that he worked in Roswell and he oh, was on Rogan. Bob, uh, but not Bob, Bob Lazar. Yeah, Lazar. Yes, yes. Uh, if you if you want to know more about this there is a gentleman by the name of Bob Lazar and he worked uh, in Roswell and he worked on the, one of these programs. He is a very controversial figure. But he's so credible. I mean, I feel like he's fucking, why would this guy ruin? And he doesn't want to be a whistleblower. He never wanted to. The, and this is, this is, there's a really interesting battle of Bob Lazar, like 
uh, proponents versus Grush comp- uh, proponent, like people who support Grush's angle. They're basically talking about the same thing, but some folks are like, oh, Grush is clearly trying to like, he's an op and they're tr- trying to put it back in the box. And people are like, oh, Lazar was like, didn't know what the hell he was talking about and made it all up. I don't, I don't know. I think where I always come back to is like, what's the chain of custody? Like, mm. and Grush did, you know, a hearing in Congress and has talked to the inspector general and they've like done some sort of chain of custody and verification of his employment with the government and the stuff he was doing. So I feel like more grounded it's Grush. with Grush, regard, like they both, they both might be right and they both might be real. I just, it's harder with Lazar because there's nothing to anchor you to reality other than his oral other testimony. Other than his testimony, which by the way, Bob Lazar was saying certain things like certain technologies in the 80s. He was then, like, there's this element, it's called, I forget what one, you know. 115? I mean, look at him. That's why he's here, Elroy Spacely. 115, and, and that's what the <laughs> spacecraft used, 115. By the way, 115 did not yeah, it exist. exist at the time. And that's there's a lot of weird stuff about And it Bob's does story. exist now, by the way. The right. Russians discovered, discovered it. and put it on the periodic table of elements. So, so he did predict or whatever was being truthful, and then these things did come out later. It's it's bizarre. I, and I why honestly, would he ruin his life, though? Why this, would, He doesn't this, want to be famous. This is my argument for when people say, like, a lot of these former government people coming forward about the UFO topic are, like, trying to do it for the money. I'm like, what, what m- money? money? bro? <laughs> do you... Do you you know how to make like what money looks like and stuff like this. Like <laughs> there is no money like no money. in the books or the podcast. Like I have one of the biggest <laughs> channels on TikTok. Yeah. There is no money. <laughs> Trust me. Well, not only that, everybody calls you crazy. Yeah, they think like, you're mentally it, ill. It's not worth it. It's it, not worth it's it. It's not worth it's it. It's like I do this. Listen, I, I wanted you here. I just wanted to talk to you and pick your brain. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm so fascinated by all of this. It's, it's super, I it's think. It's bananas. I think one of the things that's, I, the, the takeaway for folks on this is just, there are serious people within the government, within Congress and within the executive branch from every political stripe that's right. that you can think of. This isn't a right issue. No. This isn't it's, a left it's issue. It's AOC and it's the whatever and Matt Gates right and yeah, like 100%, it's 100%. It, it's, what other issue have you seen Matt Gates and AOC agree upon Literally ever. So there's really serious people who are trying to create a process for this. It is currently being blocked by three Republicans, um, the speaker, new speaker, Mike Johnson, the speaker of the House, as well as the head of the intelligence uh, committee in the House, Mike Turner from Ohio, and the head of the armed services committee in the House, um, Mike Rogers from Alabama. So if you're in any of those states and you think this is important, you should know that they're the... Look, just why... What, what what is the what is the justification? If it's nothing, then show us. And it's nothing. If it's something, then show. So there, there's really it's really hard to defend not wanting like the UAPDA to go through or not wanting legislation around this. And not only yeah, why wouldn't you want? It's like I don't. They I, just want. We know why because they're like it doesn't exist. Let's just go on status quo. Who gives a shit? You it's, know what it is what? It, because it had Schumer's name on it. I honestly oh. think half of it was just oh, was ch- it, yeah. They just looked at the name and like oh, we don't want to let Schumer have a win, right? Like it, it could be as simple as. <laughs> As that, some people are alleging that the defense companies are paying them off to do it. Oh, yeah, for I, sure. which is also possible. I don't yeah. even think they need. It doesn't even need to be that conspiratorial. Like, it could just frankly be like they don't want. It's a transparency process that like will hold accountability to government and probably like if we start doing it with this stuff, they're going to start doing it with all it's these. Waterfall, uh, and, yeah. and we don't want them looking over here. So, so the, I have okay. So two questions yes, for you. Yes. Let's look at the timeline again because I I'm so I want to live to see full disclosure. I think so. We've we've got the first benchmark down. We've laid the groundwork. We've already done that. And right. then the next big one's supposed to be by twenty twenty seven. Yes. So we're we're gonna start. Here's here's what's basically gonna be happening between now and twenty twenty seven, twenty twenty eight. You know, again, regardless of whether the this bill passes, this is already the the toothpaste is out of the tube. The cat's yeah. out of the bag. Um, we're starting to see. And actually, this is this is um, this is actually n- not quite out yet. But like, there's a huge. The biggest aerospace trade organization on the planet, the AIAA, uh, the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics, is How about do you to de- remember these acronyms. Is about to dedicate <laughs> the American Institute for Aeronautics. I'm like Jesus Christ, the AIA, the ARP, the fucking. It's a, I hate these acronyms. A tip. I mean, okay, sorry. No, go what, ahead. You know, what's, what's, what's what's cool about this is that I mean, they have they're basically are like everyone who works in all these aerospace companies, like yeah. s- like pilots. Uh, engineers, it's just like a, a normal trade organization like SAG or something like that, right? They are about to dedicate a huge amount of their like 
energy towards a UAP study program, mm. right? Outside of like the government, outside of academia, et cetera. And what's cool about that, it's like, it's not Lockheed doing it. It's not Boeing doing it. It's decentralized across like sensor experts, physicists. Who's like, paying for it? So it's it's a volunteer organization. People oh. are just genuinely interested. That's the thing that's, that's cool. fascinating. And that's there's no profit motive. That's really important. That's really what's important. Um, and so like that's, I think there's starting to be an aggregation of subject matter experts that are technical that have seen the same stuff that I've been looking at that you've been looking at are just like, okay, like let's, let's go figure this out. It's a, it's an interesting technical problem um, as well as also being fascinating just about life. So that, that when they were talking about, you know, correlating signatures, characterizing performance in these stages, at least as it pertains to like the private sector lane, mm. like the work of a group like that is what's going to start happening. So the, Basically, the, the former government people are trying to tell the government and the contractors, people in the program, yo, we can do this the easy way mm. and have a process and it's legit and like, you know, we know or we can do this the hard way and, <laughs> and we can just start dropping the stuff and you guys are going to be caught with your pants down. Mm. And it looks like the bill might get killed and there's already like now like more people coming. F- like there's definitely like a momentum happening where it's like these other whistleblowers, we've recently an article came out in the liberation times identifying the program office within the CIA that's allegedly responsible for these recoveries, the uh, office of global access. And I hopefully don't get you on a watch list by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm already on, but they're I'm like dumb things in my life. The, 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 the break, like the, the path is there, like in terms of like who's doing it, how have they been doing it? Like all of those pieces are sort of, spilling out yeah it's already in motion it doesn't it's, so 2027 is the, the first date and then let's go when is like full disclosure so they, they they sort of have it in the 30s as a as a general 2030s as a general God, I, hope I don't die before then i i think given w- where we are now th- this is this is like the like slow roll this is like the former government people being like oh, we need to protect national security this is that yeah. as soon as something a little bit tangible comes out i don't think they're going to be able to maintain that kind of the slow roll, the slow ro- well burn. there's so much distrust in the government right now like they're i don't even know there's no centralized okay. nobody trusts any leadership anymore like how are they even going to this is why the review board was so important and this is what was gutted by those republicans that i just mentioned um in like a compromised version of this but that review board was gonna have nine people on it that would be citizens Mm. right and yes they would have to be nominated by the president but it would be everyday people it wouldn't necessarily be people who were already in these you know you know (laughs) (laughs) come on let's do it lester so Esther and Christine, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I, I just, I think this is something that people should like, if this passed in March, we we're going to have CNN specials about like CNN hours where they're like, Oh, but Biden nominated, you know, wow. nine people to this thing. And it's like, people are going to be like, what the hell is going on? And where's this coming from? So this is a big reason why I started the TikTok was to try to like show the, where this came there from was an story. There's actual paper trail. Yes. Yes. This is not just yes. some weird. So, but let's talk about this. I, and I mean, this is like a bigger picture question. Why now? Why disclosure now? Who cares if we've kept it secret for so long? The human race, who knows how long the aliens have been here? Right. You know, right. they built the pyramids or we don't know. Why now? So there, there are a, a couple of possible answers. So Part of it is that this this modern process in the U.S. government side of things effectively started with the former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid when he created one of these you know letter programs in 2008, and it's now actually come out in the last couple of weeks. Like what that it was called OSAP, the Advanced Aerospace Weapon Systems Applications Program. Um, <laughs> that program was mm-hmm. built and designed originally to take material non from a non-human intelligence in the possession of Lockheed Martin who was looking to start divesting themselves of this stuff. Mm -hmm. They're like, this is too expensive. You guys don't let us bring in the scientists. It's too much secrecy. We don't want anything to do with this anymore. So they were trying to divest it. Harry Reid created this basically catch catch program. Be like, hey, you can just pop it in this program, right? And then we can start to like use that to bring people in to look at it. CIA shut it down, right? And they're Mm -hmm. like, not going to happen. But that was like, that started the snowball when then ATIP, 
evolved out of that, where we, Lou Elizondo yep, came yep. forward, who was, the, who was the Pentagon guy, who was in that original New York Times article. That then led to more whistleblowers coming forward, uh, David Fravor and Alex Dietrich. Alex Dietrich's amazing, by the way. I want to introduce you guys. She's fantastic. Love it. She's amazing. Let's she, do it. Let's fighter get pilot weird. who saw the TikToks, TikTok, Tic Tac in 04. She's about. To, she's doing oh, great yeah, work. Yeah, I know you're talking about. I saw she, her. She, she, the she's 60 so minutes. incredible. She, yes. Yeah, she's amazing. These are like, by the way, these people coming forward, these whistleblowers are decorated yes. military pilots. These yes. are not just yes. like hillbilly guys. They're flying $50 million jets. So like yes. if we are upset about like if we think these people are crazy then like um you know they shouldn't be flying 50 million dollar jets right. <laughs> right right so and i'll she's amazing um and i think that's the kind of like again is she's like i don't even like the ufo stuff i have no ownership over this thing it's something i experienced but you know is curious about it just as much as we are in terms You're of like, like what is it? what what's going on there so basically in 08 this guy wanted to get the materials back from the private sector, sector. a guy in the government was like hey it's time to reclaim this stuff it, or just it, it, it was, was being thrown away it was it was it was, it. it was a little bit of both it was you know so harry reed had heard these rumors for a while um there had been previous attempts by other people to try to get you know access to this stuff uh lockheed denied him access to the the underlying program like the, the 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 person who ran the security for that was like, no, you can't get into it. So it was like, okay, I'm going to create OSAP and we're going to just like have them divested into that. CIA said no. ATIP forms out of that. Lou Elizondo comes forward. That was the start of the modern era is, is that New York Times mm. 2017 article where now, because prior to that, the US government's position on the UFO topic was we spend no money on it. We haven't studied it since Blue Book in the 60s. And that was a lie on its face given this, OSAP program, let alone any others that have yet to come to light that also were going on. So once Lou came forward, Fravor, Dietrich, Graves all came forward. These are all pilots. And their whole thing was like, look, we, this is an aviation, aviation safety issue, right? So if you, you don't even have to get into the non-human intelligence stuff and the craft and the bodies. Like we're flying around and this stuff, we're having near misses with this stuff. And we have no way to like report it because of the stigma. Mm, right so they're called crazy not that commercial pilots are like hey we see stuff same exactly that's the flight you guys are on correct correct and there's a huge now influx of commercial pilots thanks to ryan graves who was with the military whistleblower he started his own organization that is like trying to help commercial pilots because if a commercial pilot comes forward saying they saw something they get pulled and they get tested and then you're out yeah regardless of whether it's 150 you're done regardless of whether it's real or not and like that's like look i would like them to be able to say, hey, like something's flying around my yeah. plane with 200 souls on board and like not worry about being fired. Even if it is a Russian spy Whatever. thing, great. Well, then let's fucking exactly. shoot it down, figure exactly. out a way to get these fuckers out of our airspace or whatever. Exactly. That's all huh. cascaded over now so the next couple of years where now Congress has created all these new legislation, the Aero Office. The Pentagon has a UFO office Yeah. currently. Yes, yes. Right now. That's public. Yeah. Did you guys fucking just hear what he just said? Like, it's, it's, it's legit. Like right now. <laughs> With a placard we, on yeah, the wall. Right. The director is like, we know who he is. Yeah. He talks about this stuff. He wrote a paper with a Harvard professor about <laughs> motherships. <laughs> like potentially be like. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Okay. Um, so with the why, because I, I was looking for more. I was thinking of like, well, why now? Is it because the aliens have like, okay, we're going to come out oh, now. Yes. No, so is that no, what? It, so another reason about the why now is there's a fear that. Russia and China in their efforts, because they can just, if you're smart and a physicist, they can just take you from wherever you are and put you on the program, right? Mm. So there is a perception that they might potentially have been making some fundamental breakthroughs on their material. Uh And because of the way we are set up with our security clearances and all that stuff, we can't get the smartest people on the project. So there's people in the insider basically saying like, yo, we need to get this out to more people so that we can make progress um, to catch up, to catch with, up these with these guys, guys. the Ruskies and the, yeah. So that's yeah. one of the other, and then the third potential why now is like, it's the actual NHI itself, like NHI. You know, non-human NHI. intelligence. Okay. It's a, I, don't, I like to stay away from the word aliens because I agree. I don't know what it is. Like we don't know that it's from somewhere else yet. Could be interdimensional, dude. Could be. They could be sitting in this room with us. Um, right, it could be, which that they're like, the, the aliens or whoever are like, hey guys, 
TikTok. Yeah. 2029, we're coming down. This shit's over. You guys are ready. We're evolved. We can talk now. Right. Or they will reveal. Right. right. And it could also be a why. travel thing, right? It could be that, you know, oh. like they're from so far away. It takes, literally takes the, so they could have like local pods that are like monitoring planets all over the, you know, universe. And when you get to a sufficiently advanced place, then they send over, you know, the motherships, right? Or whatever it might be. One of the arguments so is that exciting. the reason, one, one, of the re, one of the reasons that might be the case where they have these like pods all over the place. When we dropped the first nuke, right? Split the atom. Yes, I heard this theory. That is like a fundamental science breakthrough that is yes. like a clear sign of like intelligence progressing on a planet. And that could be like a trigger signal Right. To the aliens, the right. catalyst. That's what they, but that's what they were saying, that the aliens were interested in our nuclear weaponry. And that, that's the theory being that the first atomic bomb is kind of a signal, right? Yeah, like, a, what is it, a flare? Yeah, there. Exa exactly. And then like, they're like, oh, they're all these, evolved, these, they're ready. These you know, hairless apes have, <laughs> have a bunch of big ass bombs. Let's make sure they don't get into orbit. <laughs> that's right. And, and there's stories, I mean, I don't know if they're true, of, of aliens shutting down nuclear <laughs> facilities so, no, the, no this is actually one of the things that so these are legit i'm glad you brought this up there Thank are you, no there are there are several missileers the people who run our missile silos from generations that have all have these stories of you know there being a ufo over the the silos and then missiles being taken offline right and having no other event where things go offline even closer, similar to that, but there's always the presence of a craft and the shutting. Like this is uh, one of the um, Bob Salas, Robert Robert Salas is one of the ones who has um, been talking about this issue. He was at the it was an Air Force base, not Minot, um, Air Force base on the border of U.S. and Canada, right where we have a lot of our strategic yes. nuclear defense stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And he's been telling the story for for ages, and there's multiple people. I mean, this is same thing happened. Uh, there's a new gentleman that just came forward. Um, at the uh, at Vandenberg, and it was a giant red square uh, over one of the launch facilities. He had all of the they they t he did the security reporting. His all the notes. Multiple people saw this thing. I mean, it's and again, the stigma is one of the reasons. Like we can't just have an adult conversation about this. Like yes. these are people who we're just trusting with the most destructive weapons on the planet, mm -hmm. and they're trying. They're like screaming for help around this. They're like, look, y'all, like. That's kind of a pro and this is also why the government potentially doesn't want to talk about it because if there is some sort of capability that this stuff has to impact our right. our nuclear weapons, you're not going to say that to the public. Correct, because because <laughs> we're and by the way, yeah we're toast. But but then I also again if they wanted to be you know n bad towards us or whatever, they could have zapped us eons ago. This that, is that's, not the relationship I believe we have. That's a big argument people have. It's like, it's, it's like if it was a threat, a real threat, we wouldn't be here. We'd be done, dude. And I think, I think that's fair. And you know, it's also why like if it was, it's why that sort of also the military has a hard time dealing with the issue because they're set up to deal with threats. Yes. And ostensibly the stuff's fly flying around and floating around, but it's, it's not really a, a threat. Um, so they don't really, it's really an issue for the scientific and academic community to try mm -hmm. to take hold of. But the problem is like, there is this vice grip by the national security state over this issue in a way that is unreasonable and unnecessary if there's no threat, or if you're trying to tell us there's nothing there, it, it like you can't have your cake and eat it too. And I think mm -hmm. that's where the frustration is coming from. It's like, okay, great. Like if you're saying this is a waste of time, then like prove it. Right. right, right, right. But we have to we have to funnel everything through the lens of a threat for it to make sense to government. And Correct. it's like, okay, great. Is that the game we have to play to get right. the stuff looked into? Right. Okay, it's a big threat. They're gonna get us. Okay, one last topic because I, I I wish I could talk to you forever. Will you come back to Austin yeah, yeah, again? Yeah, Let's yeah. get weird again. Absolutely. Um, the water, mm -hmm. the ocean, these crafts. There have been testimonies from. Airline, Air Force pilots, people saying that these crafts can go in and out of the ocean like nothing, bro. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> we can't do that. We like, and this is, so th this was a big move. This is why they moved to UAP and not anomalous instead of aerial because of these unidentified submerged objects. So one of the things that's so interesting that people don't really know is like a lot of the ocean is actually classified right what? by the because the government has submarines around you know floating oh, around right. and so like if there's submarines in the area like 
one, we most people don't have the capability to get there anyway. So it's kind of like a moot point that it's classified. But um, these, you know, subs are one of our strongest strategic defense assets. So there's super, super secrecy around it. But again, same thing. They're seeing stuff on their little radars down there. Things going like a hundred knots in the water. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like we can't do that. And they're coming in and out of the water with no change in performance characteristics. I know. That's what I'm talking How about. Is that? It's so fucking exciting. It's so exciting because you hear these pilots talking about it and you're like, wait, what, dude? Right. With no change in like its, right. its speed or anything. And it is, they're seeing it where it's like it almost like some in some cases it doesn't like interact with the water. So it doesn't make a splash. <laughs> so when it, like it's so crazy. bizarre. Dude, it's so, it's so bizarre. Do you think, and this is really out there, this is other level weird, but I don't care because we're to go in there today. Do you think they exist in the water? Are the aliens living in the water? I, I I think water, there seems to be a correlation between two things and the appearance of this these craft, uh, nuclear material and mm-hmm. water. Um, and I think it's very feasible, like water could be an, an energy source, right? Mm. So earth could just be like a, a, a gas we're station. We're made of water. Right? Yes. You know, we're, we're, we're made of... It's, Primordial it's, stew, it's, right? it's, 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 it's It has massive abundance on our planet. Yeah. So it would make sense if it was a resource... It was viewed as a resource, right? Right. And that would make Earth interesting because we're the only planet in our solar system, at least that we know of right now, that has large amounts of accessible, maybe some of the moons on Jupiter, but of water. So I think mm-hmm. it's, I mean, Catalina Island is a is a known hotspot for this stuff. Yeah. There's all these rumors about, oh, that's where one of these underwater UFO bases is. The Tic Tac stuff happened off the coast of San Diego, not too far away from Catalina. And um, well, there's the, military bases. There, there's right? military so bases maybe. there. I, I think water is interesting because it is an energy possible energy source. It's also a great hiding place. Yeah. Right. What the fuck is in there? We don't even know half, like ninety percent of what's in the ocean. Generally, we know I more know. about this, like stuff hundreds of you know light years away than we do about our, what that's the, in that's the ocean. The trip is that we don't even yeah. We don't really know that much. We know some stuff. We know why some stuff. don't we know? That's a good why question. Why don't we know? That's if we question. can go to other planets, like we can go to Mars, why can't we send a craft down to the depths of whatever? And I want a picture of a giant squid. I've been hearing about them my entire life. You know? What the fuck? It's, There's it's, so much mis- mysterious. And I think, too, the inevitability, like with the sharing of information and the internet, you know, this is creating a renaissance. This yes. is another sharing of information yeah. and WikiLeaks and people being like, uh-uh, it's time to know. You know what's funny about WikiLeaks? That's mm. actually how I got into this originally was within the WikiLeaks dumps, there were emails between like generals yes, and Tom DeLong. Uh, and don't even talk J- to me about Tom Desta. DeLong. Come on this podcast, Tom DeLong. Mm-hmm. I have Please. to talk to him too. He, I'm obsessed with the Tom DeLong story. If you're going to, he's in, is it Blink 182? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in the band Blink, Blink 182. And he was helping the government create a disclosure program yes. to the youth. Yes. You know what's funny about this? So I actually was surfing. Bananas. Um, and met somebody who was like family friends with DeLong. And like his, the grandfather was a Lockheed Skunk Works guy. And this kid I was surfing with connected DeLong with his grandfather. And that's what kind of started the whole to the stars academy of arts and yes, science thing yes. that he did and because the, the the idea was these insiders wanted to get this out and they didn't really know how to do so and tom who's been obsessed with aliens his since whole life, yeah. his whole life um was like i've read every book <laughs> i know and the you know people love rock stars so he was able to kind of get in the door and he it's was like i have a plan a that side of the story is fascinating you guys have to go go <laughs> there's podcasts that discuss like the tom DeLong story it's, it's fucking bizarre it's very crazy it's and a lot of like a lot of really ostensibly powerful people like you know he was in the rooms with these guys. Yes. Oh yes. No. He's and, had like, conversations with people. He was for sure with in the rooms with these guys. And you know they have pictures with like it's. The emails was crazy. There's like between government people like yeah. about. It was it was Obama's and, chief of staff I think yeah. at the time and and some generals on the Joint Chiefs and DeLong talking about disclosure. 
How are we going to disclose? So you, how are we going to tell you, the public was, about it? This aliens? was supposed to happen sooner, but Trump got elected. Apparently, Hillary, they were greasing the wheels for Hillary to be the disclosure president. Sure. And then Trump oh. came in, and they're like, ah, shit. Like, and she blew it, man. Her personality was just dog shit. She fucking blew it. Cause she, she, and you know what? She had such a good run. There was a minute. Remember when the memes were being made about how cool she was? It was like, bro, you had him. And then you had to fucking be your dorky self. I could have taught you, Hillary. <laughs> Just be honest. Just be yourself. I think when you were talking with um, Jet Ski, you were talking about how uh, she was like, oh, she's, she's one of the, um, the reptilians. Maybe she is a reptilian. Maybe she is an alien. I didn't really want it out. It's, it's, it's great. I think the one, one, the one thing I, I definitely want like, people yes. to take away Tell is like, us. just there's a lot of preconce- there's a lot of you know, biased, preconceived notions we have about the subject because of the media, because of the history of it and all that stuff. And I just, I would encourage people to just suspend disbelief and like take this at face value and try to like absorb the new information. There is Chuck Schumer, who's a Senate majority leader and a political animal is not putting his name on a piece of legislation that defined non-human, that defined non-human intelligence and used it 22 times in that legislation. He's not doing that on a whim. Regardless of what you feel about him politically, um, he is the Senate majority leader because he's smart at his, and good at his job of winning in politics. So he's not going to put that out there with no basis. And I think this issue has been dominated by old white men mm. for a very long time, understandably, because that's who's in these security positions yeah, in the government. Doing stuff. But it, there needs to be like more people like me, people of color, right? Yes. More women yes. discussing this issue and involving those perspectives in this conversation For sure. because i don't want these nats national security guys to be the only ones like yeah. sort of driving the narrative of how we deal with well this. you don't want these old white guys in alabama and these fucking backwards ass places being like we don't want to know about the ain't like just go right grow up let's evolve let's move on let's get into it disclosure by the 2030s you heard it here 2027 is going to be well the first official right so let's look for that guidepost i can't Fucking wait, man. I think we're going to be seeing some interesting things. Congress is on this issue. There are people motivated to get stuff out of government. Talk to your local representatives. Talk to your senators. Like people are engaged on this issue seriously. Yeah, email your congressman, right? Or yes. email Chuck yes. Schumer. Or yes. Your local. Who should they email? So, funny enough, so after I started the TikTok stuff, and it started to take off, which I didn't even expect. I was just trying to do public education around the topic. I put, I, people kept asking me like, yeah, where do I go? Do do? What do I do? So I, I built out a, a platform called UAPcaucus.com. A caucus is a group of people that have shared beliefs in, in government, right? So right. there's there's like, you know, the Congressional Black Caucus who focus on black issues. There's the Democrats have their own. So that's kind of where that naming convention comes from. And on the, on that site, there's a call tool where you can see who all the people are that are supporting this. Great. Scripts, news articles, studies. Like it's a great repository of like primary source information about where stuff is, as well as like who you can contact locally, like in your own yes. state or area. Um, and again, I just, I don't have the answers. I'm not saying it's necessarily NHI or not NHI, but there are a significant amount of people that apparently believe that to be true that are in a position to know. Yeah, it's very interesting. And Elroy basically, you are the authority on all this stuff. He actually reads these l- pieces of legislation that are so boring and so dry, and he interprets them for regular people like us to understand. So thank you so much for coming to Austin and like explaining this stuff to me and to people that are interested. Uh, his real name is Lester, but you'll know him as Elroy Spacely on TikTok. Follow him if you want to find out. I mean, literally he covers like... Everything that happens in Congress, this guy is like, today they released a bill. And he'll explain to you all the acronyms and all the weird stuff that's happening in the government. And I cannot thank you enough for doing this because pleasure. it's just so, it's so exciting. It's an exciting time to be alive. Who knows what they'll discover, what it'll be, but it's just freaking cool. It is. Yeah. No, it is. No, pleasure. I really appreciate it. Yeah. This is great. You're awesome. All right. Thank you so much. You know, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye. Hi, mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you.